For over three and a half millennia, the islanders of Pacifica spoke without alphabet or written language, so spit me a poem. With the names of the wind and the rain, the sacred spaces of your gods and ancestors. The people of Oceania retained all knowledge and all history through the shaping of a spoken word into muscle memory. Every, Every story, story a, a poem. poem, so spit me a poem of how the world was made beginning with your grandmother's face, how every speck of land on this earth was poured from the thick cocoa of her eyes, every island and continent broken only by her blinks. An ocean erases all that is written in sand. So our ancestors etched everything into the tides of their tongues. Now, as a historian, when I retell the tales of my ancestors and the colonizers' English, I am unsure if my act is one of resistance or oppression. I sometimes still see my tongue doing amputee feels the itch of a dismembered limb. It aches when I say my own middle name. Kaululaau. Nuu Tupu. I was born with the pride of my history, but no knowledge of my language. Speaking with the pride of a skin I lived with, but not in. Imagine. Imagine the entire knowledge of the world ended with what you could remember. In ancient Polynesia, children with the best memory skills were chosen to be the culture keepers, storytellers, handpicked to be poets, weaving today's events into yesterday's lore, practicing, practicing immortality in breath, breath, adding generations to the genealogies until foreign diseases interrupted entire bloodlines with death. In just over 100 years of the arrival of the West, nearly 90% of our native population was dead and our language was banned. Only one in 10 survived. So a knowledgeable person's death was, was the, the same, same as a library, library burning down. down. Today, we are still sifting through the ashes of a culture once deemed illegal. We are the descendants of the 10% who learned to speak in smoke. I sometimes still see my tongue as just a colonizer's shovel. With most words, I am unsure if I am burying my ancestors or digging them up. So spit me a poem about rebirth and redefining home. About the ways your forefathers died and the ways that you have grown. Though, Though we, we do, do not sound like our ancestors, ancestors, we still practice their traditions. Our bones still remember their stories. I cannot escape the colonization of my people any more than I can escape their near extinction. So my own personal culture must be more than language. It is practice. So I will spit you a poem without alphabet or written language, weaving today's events into yesterday's lore. I will spit you a poem with all the knowledge of the world, ending with what I can remember and more. I will teach a hundred years of colonizers that a language is the most dangerous weapon you can give to a bloodline of storytellers, culture keepers, with the responsibility to speak no matter the split tongue. So spit me a poem about the ways you learn to mourn and love and I will call your mouth home. Spit me a poem. More rope than stone and I will weave your story into the library born within these bones. So that our stories will never have to die. So our stories will never have to live alone. alone.